All right. So last time we did Pong. Let's just check it real quick. That's good. Um, and last time we also did, I know I went over um, saving real quick. I wasn't sure about that last time, but I got some stuff on it and so we're gonna save to player prefs and then we just do dot save on there and that'll actually save it. I think there's a special place in like the editor um, files that it saves it to. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to delete it, you would just delete all the data or find the specific thing and delete it. And then you reset the money. Mm -hmm. So from last time, I had it where between scenes, you'll keep the money. But if I click delete data, it'll delete all of it. So simple enough you just save it to an int in player prefs and then delete it if you want to delete it um, and one more thing I wanted to do was I showed you how to click on buttons I didn't show you how to click on game objects because if it's like something in your game you want to click on, you might want to have that too. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So we're going to go into our enemy. We don't have an enemy controller, do we? We make one real quick. I'm going to go into test enemy and there's a specific function called on mouse down on mouse enter or, or on mouse exit. So any one of these four, I'm gonna do on mouse down, which says if you left click on something, call when the user press the mouse button over a GUI element or collider. And then let's just change the color. So change the color to, I don't have orange. Um, This orange gonna be anyway. I don't know. I'll just do that darker red. And if you're doing floats, make sure you have an F at the end. I don't know if I said that before. That's usually the case in C sharp anyway. I think. I'll just add this to the enemy. And if I click on it, let's change its color. Easy enough, because it has the script for on mouse down, and it has a box collider. So, like, mm -hmm. if we're doing a tower defense game, if you want you want to spawn a tower there, you would just have an object, and you would just click on it, and then you would just spawn a tower there if certain conditions are met. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where else you would use that for. Unless you have like a point and click game where you're clicking on random objects. Where you click on enemies to attack them or something. Um, yeah, let's try to do breakout real quick. New scene. Um, make a new script called breakout game controller. Yes, like aim at the mouse. Yeah, like it just yeah, follows where you would bring the mouse. Uh, ignore that. I have that script right here, actually. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, right here. So let me do, I'll show that real quick, actually. So I'm gonna go, do we have a player control? We have a player control, does it do anything? 
movement and stuff like that. So let me add something to the player so we can tell what the forward direction is. So the player's not even a prefab right now, is he? So name this test player. So let's just add another sprite to this so we can tell what direction is forward. We'll just do like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, make it a wall or something. Just bring it up. Not that it matters. So this direction is just forward. We're going to go into the script and I'm going to paste this and then explain it. Um, cool. So we're going to have a vector three, which is our direction we want to face. We say direction equals our mouse position. And then we're going to translate it to um, a screen point which is either somewhere in this viewport. So by default, I think it's um, checking the Unity coordinates instead. So we're going to convert it with camera.main.world to screen point. What's the player position? Yeah. Taking our position of the mouse, and we're checking it against the player's position. So like if I'm up here, it's going to draw a line from here to here, basically. And it's going to say we're going to rotate from here to this line, and look along that line. Um, make this real quick. Public float lerp speed. I'm going to say our angle. I'm going to do some um, trig, I guess. Do a direction Y, direction X times radian, so we're going to convert it to degrees, so we can know what degree to rotate it to. Because when we go in here, we see the player, and we change the Z rotation. So we want to change the transform rotation on this character, on the player. And then it's going to be transform rotation, and you can just say equals this, this new angle. But I'm doing quaternion.lerp, which is similar to, I think we did mathf.lerp or something before. Um, basically, it says don't change the transform all at once. Change it over time. So change it from its current rotation to this angle over this amount of time. Does that reduce down the choppiness? Yes, that makes it smooth. And then you just give it a time dot delta time because you want it to update every frame according to the, the frame rate or whatever so if we get lag it doesn't like spin out of control and times some speed so we can make this faster or slower so if we go in here we're going to go test player change the lerp speed to like seven or something i don't know and then it might be yep it's 90 degrees off so we're going to go look we'll just change in here so times math f dot radians minus 90, I think. Yep. So now it looks at the, the mouse. And if I change this to a lower number, it'll rotate slower, put it to like 0.5. Put it to immediate, you know, really fast. But yeah. Let's just take your mouse position. This is given in screen coordinates, in pixel coordinates, minus the player's position in in the on the screen right now. And then we convert it to a to a degree to rotate to, and then we just Lerp it 
so we change it to that degree over time. And hopefully that helps. And um, last time I linked the repository for this. So I'll push this at the end of class. So if you need this code, it'll be up there too. But yeah. No problem. Hope that helps. Breakout game controller. Go in here. It's going to be pretty similar to this one. Score text. Be the same. Um, okay. So let's see then. If we go into the breakout, save that scene, whatever. Um, I'll make a paddle first. Point two, five, one or something. Sorry, one by point two not backwards. Maybe even a little bit bigger. Maybe get a bigger wall. We're gonna give it a collider 2D. I'm gonna change this ugly background color to like black. Um make a new script breakout paddle controller. Create an ad. I opened it in a different thing for some reason. I'm basically going to copy this over, kind of. Breakout. Oh, need a void update, huh? So instead of having both of these, I'm going to do your body 2D, which is body, speed, I'm going to do vector 2 input. I'm going to say input.get access. I'm going to get horizontal axis. We're going to move to the right or left. Oh, actually, this can just be a float. Equals. There we go. So we're going to keep track of if we're pushing um, left or right or the A and D keys. And if our input's not zero, then we're going to move left or right. So we're going to move to the right times our current input times speed times the time. So we just need to do void awake and get our rigid body reference. And that should work, I think. Might be all we need for the paddle controller. Did I not make speed public? I put it in the wrong script, that's why. I'm supposed to put it in this one, that's why. Sorry about that. I should have opened this one automatically, but it didn't for some reason. So I don't like adding it from this menu, I like adding it over in the script folder. So I don't get confused. So speed, um, I don't remember what the speed was for these paddles, 1500, we had 5 linear drag on the rigid body. And this breakout player, um, I'm going to give it a player tag so the ball knows to bounce if it hits him, 1500 speed, and I'm going to add a rigid body to it with no gravity scale, five linear drag. I think that's it. I'm gonna drag it. Um, 
So if your um, if your thing's super zoomed out and you want to focus on something on something, you click on it and then you would go into the scene editor and push F, or you can just double click the object and it'll focus on it for you. Drag it way down there, a little bit higher. I'm gonna make some walls first. Okay, I'll make um, one more for the top. And then I'll make, um, let's rename these to wall. I'll make one more. Out of bounds. I'm gonna add a tag to it. Uh, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make it have the gold tag. Doesn't really matter. We can check for different tags in the um, ball controller that we set up. But five point five and zero. I'm gonna make this a wall again, but I'm gonna make it kind of see through. So I'm gonna change the alpha. And make it red. I'm just going to change its order and layers so it's underneath everything else. So you can see it right there. Add a collider to it. I'm going to make it a trigger collider. I'm going to kind of drag it down a little bit. So I'm going to change the offset to like negative 0.25 or something so that when the ball hits it, it doesn't immediately like spawn back up again. Because in, um, in Pong, we can see that the ball disappears immediately. We can kind of fix that though if we just change the collider. Like, um, it doesn't really matter. It's just an extra thing. Like, it disappears right there instead of actually going into the goal, which we can change by just changing the um, the box collider. Here, you can just go point three or something. It'll do the same thing. It'll just look a little better. Anyway, um, so let's make a ball real quick. Um, I'm going to rename this to Pong Ball so I don't get confused with those. I'm going to drag one in though. I'm going to keep track of this. Make another script called Breakout Ball Controller. I'm going to go into the Pong regular ball controller. I'm just going to copy everything right now. You can change what we need to in a second. I'll paste it in. Um, let's see. So you want it to move down every time, but maybe left or right. So this one just adds either left or right speed, and this one always adds vector two up. So let's just do times random up. Just leave it like that. Negative vector two up times random up. So let's just push it down when it starts, and it'll move either left or right at the beginning. Um, so if it hits the player, we're gonna move. Um, let's store the y velocity. We're basically gonna flip the x and y's in this. X y dot velocity dot x plus x. So if we just flip them, it should move um, left or right 
according to our current um, collider position. So like if you hit it on the left a little more, it'll shoot it to the left more instead of just reflecting off things. Um, if you enter, if you hit a goal, then So this one we're doing different. If we hit the goal, that's a bad thing in this case. We lose points. So we're gonna go to the game controller and we're gonna make a script or a, um, a function. Like void lose, lose health. I'm just gonna do this a simple right, way right now. Um, lives equals three. lives minus minus if lives is less than or equal to zero then we die and we can go down here and say void die we define in here what die does so we can do something like um dead UI or something and do this a couple times void to start so I'm gonna make it so that when we're out of lives then we're gonna show some UI for it and then after like three seconds we're gonna restart the level so, so check that automatically. There should be um, some UI also for what our current health is. So, public text life text. I'm gonna reduce our lives. I'm gonna say life text dot text equals lives plus lives dot to string open close so if we're dead um, I'm gonna pause the game when we die so I'm gonna do time dot time scale so if you want to pause your game you can change the time scale on it and it'll um, just freeze the game and you can change this between zero and whatever like 50 or something crazy like that um, but you know he stops you at a certain point if you go too crazy i don't think negative time scale works either but there's ways to keep track of what you do in the game and do like reverse time stuff apparently I, there was like a bracket tutorial on that that i saw a while ago um so let's do zero f when we restart it though we're gonna set time scale equals one f you have to restart it if you set your time scale to zero and you change your scene then it'll keep that same time scale so be careful of that too so you always want to have something reset your time to back to one after. Let's do scene manager from last time dot load scene scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. So load the scene and the thing we're gonna load is the current active scene. Um one more thing we're going to do is dead UI dot set active to true. So the UI that has the game over screen, we're going to just activate it. That should be good. Add. So add UI, we're going to add text. We're going to Alt click, middle top. I'm gonna go like negative 100 or something. Not even that much. Again, like five by five, I don't know. Oh, I can't see it because it's not um, overflow in here. Yep. 
125. Um, I'm going to make it bold. 24 times. That's a little too much. Change the color to just. Um, if you want to grab a color in, in the scene that you already have, you can just click on this little dropper tool and then just go over and click it. I'll make it this little background color. I really like green would work too. Like a bright green. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Um, it should always show it. So we're gonna go make an empty game object. I'm gonna zero it out. I'm gonna add a game controller to it. I'm gonna drag in the text. Oh, that's the white text. Sorry. I'll make another object. I'm going to make it um, an image. I'm going to um, make it really light and red. And I think you can um, control alt or shift alt to stretch things to that size. So I'm going to control alt the bottom right and it makes it the size of the whole canvas. Um, and I'm going to add a text to that. I'll do 5x5 five five again, I don't know. 40 point font, bold and italic. I'm going to center it and I'm going to say, you are dead. I'm just going to say, say whip. I'll put it up like 50 or something. I don't know. You can do what you want with that. But So this thing's going to be what activates when we die. So I'm going to rename this to breakout game controller. Drag in that one to the dead UI. And then I'm going to deactivate it so we don't see it all the time. So I just click on it and go to the little top left that sets it to inactive. And I think we need a couple more things to actually do stuff. I'm gonna move the ball down and make the ball a little smaller. I'm gonna add the breakout ball controller to it. Um, I think these ones are gonna be flipped now. So random up is gonna be like 50 and the random side is going to be like 25 I think I think that works let's remove it now the other one I'm going to override my prefab so I don't um, so it works in any scene I put it in oh yeah I forgot that again so we're going to go to the ball or the player and freeze the Y position and Z rotation. Also, actually the pong ball should still. Uh, unpack it and rename it. it. Still has the bounce, right? It does not have the bounce. I'm gonna add the bounce material to it. This, was not, this one doesn't have it either. It's weird. I might have not overridden the prefab in the Pong game. So now it bounces. We just didn't have bricks to break on it. So I'm going to make a new object. I'm going to make it um, 0.1 and like 0.5 like that, make it a wall, add a collider to it, I'm going to make, I'm going to add a, the wall script to it, the wall tag to it, I mean, sorry, 
going to save this as a prefab. Make it like make it like orange, orange brick. Um, that's all we need. So I'm just gonna Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to select all of these, shift click, I'm going to control D all of them. So I'm going to have to make this eight times. I'll do the first like four again. Duplicate them. Like that. It doesn't look great, but it, it, it'll work. So we're going to go into the game controller. Now let's go into the ball first. The ball controller, we're going to duplicate this one. We're going to say if we hit a wall, we're going to destroy collision. Dot. If I can do that right. My mouse acting weird or keyboard acting weird there we go destroy collision game object so if we hit a if we hit a break we're gonna destroy the brick and then it should bounce automatically so um one last thing for taking damage what's up oh, okay um so if we hit it we're gonna do Breakout game controller. Controller. Why is this not completing now? That's weird. My colors are acting weird now. Interesting. I'm gonna do cont dot um, lose health. Open close. Hmm. I don't think we tested this yet, did we? Did not test it yet. Huh. Let me see real quick. Lose health. Minus, minus, minus. Start to string. Okay, well, one thing I forgot to do this is going to be in an on, oh, on collision enter instead. Sorry. On collision 2D does not contain. Collision 2D is not contain compare tag. Oh. Collision not game object dot compare tag. Easy mistake. I don't know why I wasn't doing anything else before. Um might work now. It damages it, but it doesn't show the health. Oh. So I don't have an on awake event, duh. So when we start, we just want to set that that text first. Let's do one more thing. So I want to display how many bricks there are left in the scene. That way, if we're done with 
done breaking all the bricks, then we can start another game. As soon as one gets destroyed, we want to change how many there are left. Also, we want to fix the ball spawn position. So two things. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go vector 3, start position. We're going to do start position equals transform dot position. And then instead of in the push ball, actually in the reset position, instead of doing vector 3 out of 0, we're going to do equals start position. So that should work on that end. And now we need to set the brick text. So int num bricks. So the number of bricks equals game object dot find game objects with tag. So find all the game objects that have the wall tag. And we're going to do dot length. So how many bricks we have total. Then we're going to say brick text equals bricks left plus num bricks dot to string. And every time we hit a brick, we want to update that text public void hit brick. And then we're just going to update that text. We're going to say if um, num bricks less than equal to zero, then we're going to end the game or restart the game. Invoke. Invoke restart after 2f. And one last thing, we're just going to do num bricks minus minus. And in the ball controller, we're going to say if we hit a brick, then cont dot hit brick. It should work. Cannot convert. Cannot convert string to UI text. Dot text. Brick text dot text equals that. Add another thing. I'm just going to duplicate this one and move it over a little bit. Move it over to one. Um, oh, whoops. No screenshot. 75. 50 even. Bricks left. Make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make it orange instead. When I drag it in right there, I think it should work. Let's see. It's 22 bricks. 21 bricks. I don't know if it's actually accurate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Seems accurate. Yep, it's accurate. Cool. It might get stuck. Oh, it's not going to get stuck. Cool. It's going to bounce. It's not going to hit it, though. Oh, cool. Yep, and then two seconds later, it restarts. So I'm just going to let it die. And then time scale is zero, so we can't move it all. Oh, that's a problem. If time scale is zero, you can't actually do a countdown. <laughs> Bad about that. Um, so let's see. 
Let's fix that then. Instead of doing that, we'll say build dead. Set that to false, and we'll say dead equals true. I'll just do a quick update event if dead if input dot any key down if we push any key then we're going to restart works a little better a key and it restarts. Cool. That's brick break. And you can just fix this up and make it look prettier if you want them to be more arranged. Or you can do different levels where they take more than one hit to die. And you can set up like um, a controller script for the bricks. And you give them a health variable and then just decrement it when they get hit or something like that. Add multiple balls, you can do a bunch of stuff to it, but yeah. Not good for everybody. Um let's see. Break out quick and objects, rewind team management. That was it for today. I'm just gonna stay here and if anybody needs help on their progress reports, then let me know. They do Sunday, by the way. I'll um, put an announcement like tomorrow or something so you guys don't forget. But yeah, just um, CC both of us in the email and then okay. send us an okay. email for it. No problem. Yeah, let me show my example real quick. I've already gotten a couple, and the ones that I've gotten so far are fine. So, some progress report. So I have this one. So you just list what you added to your game, or uh, to your game, or the micro games within these last two weeks. Like, I added a racing menu. I added a game controller to show the UI at the end of a race. I added player movement. I added, updated a car controller, made a map. And then you just show screenshots of it. So like mine has a screenshot of each of the things that I described. The menu, the two player, the um, Unity layout, how it looks actually. And then some screenshots from the scripts. So not too much. But yeah, something simple is fine. Uh, they're supposed to be individual. So different group members can send different things, but because the micro games are solo, you have to do the progress report solo. Okay. So everybody should send a progress report. I think since that's the end, I'm going to stop recording, but I'm going to stay. Yeah. Questions. Topics, topics to still be clear. Yes. Are they, are they like a document you submit, or they, could the report itself be just like the email? It can just be an email if you want. Okay. It's probably easier if you make it in like a Google Doc, and then you just update the Google Doc. So okay. if you do something in like the last two days, then um, you'll have it still. So. Right. Just thought I was recording with my camera on the whole time, so that's cool. <laughs> it's fun.